guys, so I wanted to go ahead and give you an opportunity to watch this video that goes along with the key that is posted on this Canvas page. And this is just the flow chart that goes along with the table on the opposite side of this sheet. And it breaks down the process of cellular, cellular respiration into both cellular respiration and then fermentation. So the first thing I want to start with is what sugar do we begin with? What simple sugar? We begin with glucose. And for those of you who don't remember, that is C6H12O6, okay? And glucose breaks down and releases something in a certain process, but it breaks down into something called pyruvate. Or you may know it as pyruvic acid, okay? In this process, we also release a certain amount of ATP. And this first process of cellular respiration is called glycolysis. In this step of cellular respiration, we are in the cytoplasm of the cell. And what we do is we take that first part of cellular respiration equation, which has glucose and oxygen, and we break that glucose into pyruvate, and we also release two ATP molecules. And that's that energy that our cells are able to use right off the bat. Now, something important happens after this step. We need to determine if we can take the more efficient route, much like a highway, or if we need to take the back roads because there's an obstacle in our way. And that obstacle that can get in our way is actually the presence of oxygen. If we have oxygen, we call that aerobic aerobic respiration. That's how we get more efficiency out of cellular respiration. Now, if we do not have oxygen, we call that anaerobic. In anaerobic respiration, there is no oxygen present, so we can't go the highway route. We have an obstacle in our way. So what we're going to focus on first is we are going to focus on the aerobic route or the highway route, and then we'll return to this side. So if we have oxygen after our first step in the cytoplasm, we can move to the mitochondria. And the reason why I like comparing this to a highway is because we can make so much more ATP using the highway route than using the fermentation route. So the second step of cellular respiration is called the Krebs cycle. And this occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria. So that empty space within the mitochondria. The Krebs cycle produces carbon dioxide. It produces two electron carriers, and it does produce ATP. Again, though, the Krebs cycle requires oxygen. So the Krebs cycle releases four CO2. It also produces NADH and FADH. Do you guys remember how many ATP are produced by the Krebs cycle? Two. So, so far in glycolysis we made two. And remember, this is that step where we have to spend two ATP to make four. So we got a net gain of two ATP. Then, because we have oxygen, we can move to the Krebs cycle. We produce two ATP, four CO2, and these two electron carriers. From that point, we're going to move to the Criste fold of the mitochondria. And that's where the third step occurs. The third step is called the electron transport chain. And in the electron transport chain, this is where we get the final products of cellular respiration. And remember, those products of cellular respiration are carbon dioxide. That's where this comes from. Water, that's where this comes from, and ATP. Well, where do we get all that ATP from? This is the final step that makes it the most efficient, okay? This is like when we're on the freeway. We are using the best mileage possible for our vehicles. So we have two from glycolysis, two from the Krebs cycle. Here, we make between 32 and 34 ATP. This is how we're able to get a grand total of 36 ATP. And if you need to break that down, remember, we get 
two ATP from glycolysis. We get two ATP from the Krebs cycle. And then we get 32 ATP from the electron transport chain. So that's our efficient route. Well, what happens when we don't have oxygen? When we don't have oxygen, we can't move to the mitochondria. So we actually stay in the cytoplasm. And there are two different types of fermentation. One of them is lactic acid fermentation. The other one is alcoholic fermentation. So from glycolysis, we still start with that glucose. We've broken it down into pyruvate and we've gotten two ATP. However, during fermentation, we're not going to make any more. So alcoholic fermentation produces two things. Lactic acid fermentation produces one. This is where we are going to use our back road. This is lactic acid fermentation. In lactic acid fermentation, this is where our muscles are cramping because we have a lack of oxygen. And how do we fix those cramps in our muscles? We drink water and we stretch a lot to open that up and provide blood that carries oxygen to those cells. So lactic acid fermentation produces lactic acid. The second type of fermentation is alcoholic fermentation. And this is how we use yeasts and we are able to produce beverages that like wine and beer and champagne and also cheeses that have holes in them like Swiss cheese and breads that are risen from the yeast. So they do produce CO2. That's how we have the bubble in those beverages. And we also, this is how we get those bread, that bread to rise, okay? So it not only re produces carbon dioxide, it also produces alcohol. You may see this as ethanol as well. So what you guys need to understand from this is there are two routes. Glycolysis isn't going to change. If there's oxygen, we're going to go the aerobic route. We're going to move to the mitochondria. We're going to go to the Krebs cycle and then the electron transport chain and have 36 ATP. If after glycolysis, though, we don't have oxygen, we have to go the anaerobic route or without oxygen. We have to stay in the cytoplasm. And depending on the cells, we're going to go through lactic acid fermentation or alcoholic fermentation. This route, the highway route, produces between 36 and 38 ATP. The back roads only produce two.